I'm about to get in some trouble. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Pull up a bean bag, grab a cookie. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't been here before, hit subscribe because I would like to see you here again. If you've been here before, you'll know that I like chatting shit about books and today, is no different. Change is impossible. Resistance is futile. Let's go. Today we're going to talk. We today we're going to be talking about classics. Have you ever been intimidated by a classic book? Have you ever thought, what even is a classic book? We're going to talk about that today, and also just maybe unpack some of your weird feelings around the canon. Now, despite having an English degree and an English literature masters, I have been in a lot of conversations where people are like, "Darling, that is so Middlemarch," or perhaps even in those conversations where somebody's like well that's Orwellian and you're like I don't really know what you mean but I'm just gonna or someone might have said to you oh, you have to read the Count of Monte Cristo and, and you're like no <laughs> way there is literally not a cat's hope in hell that I will ever read that book now I asked you on Instagram how many classic books you think I've read the <laughs> answers ranged from five ten to 200 or 1000. And I think there's often this misconception of people who have studied things or people who have worked in industries like, like books and th that they've read incredibly widely and incredibly deeply. <laughs> Sounded rude, don't know why, move on. Mature. 31, Lena, you're 31 now. Now, I think it's kind of impossible for somebody to have an encyclopedic knowledge of all types of literature. And I think when I took my degree, I kind of avoided a lot of the classic modules when I could, which is r why I probably haven't met, read as many classics as you think I have. But also bear in mind that, that most people have jobs and stuff to do. And the people that have read really wildly, it's probably either their job or they're so rich that they don't need a job. And that's okay. Like if you're reading for fun, the emphasis must be on fun. Otherwise, what are we flesh puppets even doing here on this planet? Um, so I wanted to tell you my body count, how many classic books I've read. I went through all of my reading lists and tried to work out how many classic books I've read. And I'll tell you what my body count is, it's 50. Now that might be way lower than you thought it was or way higher, but there are lots of books on those top 100 classic books lists that I genuinely haven't read. I've never read any John Steinbeck. I've never read Middlemarch. I've never read To Kill a Mockingbird. I haven't read War and Peace. I haven't read it. I make no apology, but it's something that I think more people should be open about. And I think the one person who got it pretty right on the Instagram story was somebody who said, enough to fill a wheelbarrow. And uh, I, I'd say that's accurate. 50 bucks in a wheelbarrow sounds about right. Now I just want to have some fun today and um, do a thing with classics that I've seen other booktubers like Jack Edwards and people do with other books and review all of the classics that I have read in one sentence. Now, whether you just want to steal that sentence and repeat it at a party if you ever want to pretend you've read the book, or you just want to be of a laugh um we're gonna do that but then we're also going to talk a bit more seriously about classics and how you might feel about them but before we do that we have to define what a classic is which is a fool's errand because it's impossible um here are some answers that you guys gave me on instagram one of you said it was it's something timeless something widely loved something that people would bring up to other people to impress them something by a cis white male very accurate something we still discuss 50 40 or 20 years later there were lots of different varying degrees of what that time frame was. Something that was a pioneer of its time, something that displayed pure talent, something that has been frequently referenced elsewhere and in other people's works, something that's in this weird word, the canon, if Penguin says so. And then finally, if a judge would sentence an alt-right student to read it as part of their charges. <laughs> now for the purposes of this video, I am counting anything that was released before I was born in 1990 yeah, born in that has been assigned to me at university or school or I have heard of being assigned to other people. That's not my one million pound final answer. It's not the hill I wanna die on, but it's my working definition for this video and we'll get into more of the nuances of that later. I'm also not counting plays or poetry unless it's one story told in verse and you, it's been published in one volume then I'm gonna count it. Okay, are we clear? Then let's begin. Pamela, how Disney's Beauty and the Beast would go if they told us the truth. Heart of Darkness, disappointed, but not surprised. Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen's warm-up act. Not, not, not her best, but that's like saying it's the worst gold 
brick on the pile of gold bricks you know the book of marjorie kemp now as a feminist i feel about marjorie kemp being the first woman to author a book in known record in the same way i feel about margaret thatcher being the first female prime minister the great gatsby um just watch the movie 1984 don't watch the movie Uh, this has changed my view of rats and pubic hair irrecoverably irreversibly (laughs) But it is like muesli. It's not the funnest choice, but it is good for you. So get it down, yeah. Catch it in the rye. This was assigned to school children so that they could weed out the red flag kids early. And if you like this book growing up, then you're probably on an Ofsted watch list somewhere. Mrs. Dalloway could have been an email. Animal Farm at 112 pages kind of was an email. The picture of Dorian Gray actually slaps continues to slap will slap forever some of the best writing i've ever read howard's end the fact that i read this book three times like it was my own wood and paper child and then proceeded to never read another forster book ever is frankly a sign of self-sabotage in myself do i want me to suffer (laughs) beloved i will never recover masterful gut punch jane eyre slow burn and a questionable message, but uh, the people are right. It does indeed slap. Paradise Lost. I would rather read my own medical records. <laughs> the Lonely Londoners. I read this book in 2011. So the, the memories are very foggy, but they are fond. So that's a good, that's a good sign, right? Emma, the best book you will ever read. Read, read. A Room of One's Own. An email that could have been five volumes long, oh, I would not have minded. Treasure Island, the only adventure book which made me really wish that everybody had stayed the fuck home. Swallows and Amazons. I can't tell whether this book was trying to teach me colonialism or self-sufficiency at the impending apocalypse, but I really lapped this up as a child. I absolutely loved it. Mouse. This man is such a genius that his first name is Art. Enough said. The Hobbit. Mm. I'm about to get in some trouble. Great plot. Shame about the right egg. The Bible. A t- poor authorial voice. Literally no through thread. Definitely does not live up to the hype. The remains of the day. Just in Under the Wire at 1989. Uh, just b- months before I was born. Um, but if history doesn't remember this book, I'm going to be so pissed. It is one of the best books literally ever in my top 10 of all time. Persuasion. Probably the reason that I have a weird tendency to cling to men when it's clearly never going to happen. But can I be mad about it? No, it's so good. Uh, the turn of the screw. I have never known rest. <laughs> I've never been so bored and terrified at the same time. It was so confusing. Stone Butch Blues. While not incredibly executed, this is probably worth its weight in gold because it's about the the experience of trans and non-binary people during the 50s, 60s and 70s. And we don't have much record of that. And Leslie Feinberg actually went through that and then wrote a fiction book about it. So I think that you should probably read it. Catch 22. The only classic book most male boomers have read. And, um... It shows. Portrait of the artist as a young man. Probably the only James Joyce I will ever read. And I've reconciled myself to that. I've accepted that about myself. I'm okay with that reality. A vindication on the rights of woman. Really surprisingly readable considering when it was written. Horrifyingly hashtag relatable. Should not still relate to this. The Drowned World. Uh, Reading this during lockdown was uh, admittedly a big mistake on my part, but I was jubilated that London wasn't at least underwater and I wasn't surrounded by dinosaurs. Uh, However, probably patchy and a bit problematic. A Christmas Carol. Charles Dickens missed a trick. Not making Marley two brothers. I think the Muppets have shown us that. But apart from that, impeccable, untouchable, freaking love this book. Some immaculate yuletide socialist propaganda. We have to stand. We have no choice. Leaves of Grass gave me ample material with which to repost quotes on my Tumblr account. Villette, if you don't speak French and you do not like unreliable narrators, then gung-ho and godspeed to you, good friend. (laughs) Smooth sailing. Communist Manifesto. I mean... What is there to say? (laughs) Almost made me a communist. Didn't, but it was a really good try. 
Bleak House. <laughs> this is like a party where you were so drunk that you literally have no memory of being there, but there are photos or like essays in my case. Hard times, proof that Charles Dickens was a discovery writer because I literally had no idea where he was going with this and I was almost certainly con convinced that he did not either. <laughs> love letters between Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West, posh women being in love and also a little bit raunchy and smutty and I absolutely loved it and adored it. All I have to say, I guess, is that they, they took Eat the Rich quite literally. The Master and Margarita, I'm really sorry, but I hated this book. <laughs> the Bloody Chamber, I'm really sorry, but I also hated this book. <laughs> Oranges are not the only fruit. Makes my run in with Christianity seem like a trip to Legoland. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Do not mainline these, but pepper them throughout your life. They're quite entertaining. The Rape of the Lock. Um, Alexander Pope and A.A. A. Milne are the two people responsible for the fact that I am insufferable when writing poetry and cannot stop making things rhyme. I know it's annoying, but it is their fault. Um, the Rape of the Lock is, is actually not about rape. It's about uh, somebody having their hair cut and uh, it's it was written to settle a family feud. So I, on that level, think it's actually quite entertaining, if not a little dark. Um, the Souls of Black Folk, super readable considering it was written in 1903 and gave me a lot to think about. Um, I had to read some of the commentary and context around this to like understand the nuances of how people read it because there's a lot of debates about it, but it was it was a good thing to know about and read. The Soul of Man Under Socialism. Do you hear the people sing, singing the songs of really fucking confused men? I don't know when you're serious or when you're not Oscar Wilde and it's starting to, it's stressful when it's non-fiction. I think it's funny when it's fiction, it's stressful when it's non-fiction. Alice in Wonderland. Love it just for the poetry in it. Oh, could you walk a little faster? Said the white wing to the snail. <laughs> Wizard of Oz, a cursed classic. All of the sequels to this were kind of a bit bullshit, but Wizard of Oz, untouchable. Handmaid's Tale, totally worth reading even if you have watched the TV show or you have watched it and didn't like it or have watched it and did. It is like a kind of different beast and it's so well written. She, I hate, I hate hate the fact that this is such a fucking page turner because it's literally by far the most offensive classic I have ever read and should only be read with the York notes in the other hand but I hate they was actually kind of one of the only classics I've read that had a modern sense of pacing. <laughs> the Good Terrorist. I read this about 10 years ago and vividly remember finding it incredibly boring. However, I have thought about it at least four or five times a year ever since. So I think that's a gold star. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. This is written in Middle English, so like, 15th century English. So I would recommend either reading this after having studied Middle English or after four vodkas. Now I have a few things to say at the end of this. Um, one, if you have ever felt or been made to feel inadequate, in I can't even say the word inadequate, that's how inadequate I am. If you've ever been made to feel inadequate because you haven't read a certain book or a certain classic, screw those people, like what the fuck? Um, I think history is something that's really important to know about, uh, but we have to admit that it's incredibly male, pale and stale for the most part with a, f a few white women trickling in there. So if you're somebody who reads for actual fun and that doesn't sound fun to you and you're not also interested in reading the historical context and you don't have the energy for that, I don't freaking blame you. There are people who, like it's people's jobs to learn about this and to know about this. It is important if you're commissioning new writing or you are a writer, then I think it is important to know what's been done before and, and what has influenced the people that you have read. But but if you're just like trying to have some fun out here and reading is a hobby for you, I, re I personally want to release you from the feeling of having to have read the classics. If it doesn't spark joy, drop it immediately. However, the classics that you hear about the most often might not be the classics that you most enjoy. And I'd hate for you to miss out on some cool stuff just because you were forced to read some really freaking boring stuff at school. And I also think this idea of a classic is something that has stood the test of time, has a slight weird bias to it because we know with real life objects that we can hold in our hands that things that stand the test of time are often the things that have been wrapped the most neatly in preservative paper 
paper. <laughs> Some books were embalmed, like freaking joyous emperors slash suspicious dictators, and other books were used like chip paper. There's also the defense of the canon and classics being like, well, they were the ones that everybody else was reading at the time, they're the most important, so we have to read them to understand the time. And that's not always the case. The gift of hindsight doesn't always, that's not a through thread of truth. Moby Dick was not popular in his time at all. Nobody while Melville was alive, like, cared or really even knew who he was. Like, he was completely rejected. So we can't really learn anything about his time from me reading Moby Dick. But we can learn other things, but that's a video for another day. Especially seeing as, as now you've seen my list, you know that I haven't freaking read it. Or they were considered frivolous, like Jane Austen, but are now boastable reads, things that are very highbrow when they were quite lowbrow in their day. So perhaps the classics that you would have loved have been forgotten because they were frivolous, written by people without money, or they weren't in print at all. Perhaps the people who would have written the classics that you would have loved remained illiterate because of social and economic depravity. So when you feel like you are missing out by not reading classic books, I want to reiterate that we're all kind of missing out. It is most likely that most of the most talented voices of each era were not able to rise to the top and have the opportunities to write their future classics. They didn't emerge, and if they did emerge, they almost certainly weren't preserved. So when you feel like you're missing out, remember that everybody kind of is. So if you want to read classics, then knowing that is incredibly important. But I was also reading this book uh, recently, which by the way, is going really well, I love it. But there was a quote in it that I had to write down. It said, it is tradition that the English embrace, not history. Oh, <laughs> and I think when we, think about the truth. So if I think about myself as English and I live in this country called England, um, it has loads of traditions around it and that is based on history. The classics are part of that history and if we don't read that history and we don't know that much about it, we don't have much chance of understanding the traditions that we currently live in. And I think if you're in charge of something that executes tradition and you don't know the history behind it, I think that's kind of a little bit irresponsible. That's when I think these classics come are, become invaluable not because they in themselves are masterpieces, but because they can unlock new stuff about how we treat the present and the future. So if you would like to read the classic literature books, that small fragmented part of history, come with, to it with a critical eye in your back pocket just in case, but enjoy it. Some of it is really, really great. Not all of it, but some of it is really, really great. But if you don't, that is totally Okay, um, what is more important and more urgent, I think, is to start reading the voices that are around us right now to make sure that the best ones get to the top and that they emerge and that they are preserved. Appreciate the books that are being published right now that could be the next classics and the ones that you genuinely really love, uplift them, support them, pay for them, review them, shout about them. The two books that are next on my classics TBR are Passing by Nella Larson and Grapes of Wrath. But I also asked you on Instagram if you have read some classics, which ones are the ones that are actually worth it? And the top answers were Pride and Prejudice, Jane Eyre, Frankenstein, Rebecca, and 1984. So do with that what you will. Let me know if you do want to read more classics or some good classics you've read in the comments below. If you would like to watch more book videos, there are some of those here. If you fancy a change of some of that over here, thank you so much to the Gumption Club for making these videos possible. Keep reading. Frogstog. Oot.